on his toes now and then, toasting himself comfortably. And with what dignity, too. In the smallest details of life, ma'am, His Royal Highness was an example to us all. Everyone came to appreciate him. Finally, didn't they? Well, let us attend to the business first, then we can enjoy the rest of the evening. What is it this time? Business, ma'am? No, oh, no, Mr. Disraeli. I know very well you haven't come all the way down here just to see an old woman. Indeed I haven't, ma'am. I've come to see the most fascinating woman in England in her enchanted tower. But I will admit I did prepare some slight excuse. <laughs> you are amusing, Mr. Disraeli. You really are. <laughs> what is the excuse this time? I wish to tell you myself, ma'am, that the disturbances are now all under control and there is no further immediate danger. I can see you're going to be devious again. What disturbances? They begin, I believe, as debates about Your Majesty's regrettably protracted absence from London. Oh, yes, I know, I know. But of late they've taken a more serious turn. There were several thousand in the demonstration before Buckingham Palace the other night after someone had posted a to let sign on the gate. To let? The implication by your leave, ma'am, was that the tenant had moved out for good. Oh. May I pursue the subject further? If you think you must. I do, ma'am. There's no one in the world who has more sympathized with Your Majesty in her sorrow than Your Majesty's true friend and most loyal subject. Or been in a better position to understand her need for solitude. But I do believe the time has come for Your Majesty to reflect again on its wisdom. Please be careful, Mr. Disraeli. I intend to be, ma'am, as careful as the circumstances will permit. But there are matters of importance at stake here, and it may be that some boldness will be necessary. Uh, for example, the government's reform program, a matter which I know to be very close to Your Majesty's heart. I cannot see the connection between my personal grief and a proposal to better the conditions of the people. If Your Majesty would allow me to trace this connection. The odds against the passage of the program are now being quoted at five to one. Such proposals as slum clearance, public housing, educational facilities for the poor are all wise and worthy measures and consequently will be opposed vigorously. Now, the British are a proud and independent people, ma'am, and will not yield to improvement without a stout struggle. I know of but one power in the country capable of turning this almost certain defeat. But I thought I made it quite clear that I approve of these measures. Words won't be enough to win this victory, ma'am, not even yours. I ask you to be careful, Mr. Disraeli. I'm afraid I must take the risk, ma'am. The truth is the country has discovered a certain inconsistency between Your Majesty's words and Your Majesty's practice. In Your words, they have found only love and sympathy and understanding. In Your Majesty's long seclusion, I regret to report they can find nothing of the kind. They remember, you see, how pleasantly you once moved about your realm. Like a lamp that brightened not only England, but the world itself. In those days, ma'am, you were Britannia in person, giving hope and happiness to your people. You were a holiday in Liverpool and a celebration in Bristol. You were like drums and trumpets wherever you went. And men and women and children clamoured to see you pass by in the street. But I'd be lying, ma'am, to pretend that this was so today. Talk of your abdication is common. Republicanism, which used to hide in corners, is now almost fashionable. It's even been argued in the House of Commons. And in the House of Lords, a peer, ma'am, has gone so far as to ask what England is getting in return for the hundreds of thousands of pounds that it pays annually for the royal establishment now that its ceremonial functions have lapsed. How can they say so? I'm so unhappy. So alone. Allow me to contradict you for once, ma'am. You are not alone. Not even near it. You have 30 million friends in England who ask only the opportunity to tell you again, face to face, that they love you. What do you propose? This is an invitation, ma'am, from the... Governors of the Lambeth Foundling Hospital begging the honor of Her Majesty's presence at the celebration of its 100th anniversary. The occasion itself is without specific importance. 
that it would be impossible to exaggerate the good that would come of it should your majesty see fit to accept yes this is what i was afraid of i only ask your majesty to consider the circumstances carefully why do they insist on such purely ornamental duties in a sense ma'am the flag is also purely ornamental i don't enjoy my own happiness mr distraley surely you know that better than anyone else in the world but what can i do i'm alone and often i'm frightened i admit it but in here among things that are familiar to me or in balmoral which he loved even more i have a certain strength and courage i get it i believe from him from the memories he's left me can you understand that i can indeed ma'am we spent so much of our time in this room you know it was his favorite i can still see him rolling this pen between his fingers as he studied some paper that i must understand inside he insisted one night that i must read this book that he had enjoyed we discussed that picture one evening whether it was a fair likeness of the children or not he sat in this chair he read under that lamp he stirred the fire with that poker we went into dinner from here and he held my arm in the hall smiled at each other across the table because because we thought of the same thing at the same time there's no part of Windsor that hasn't these memories of him for me and as long as I have them around me I feel I'm able to go on but not I'm afraid otherwise do you see what I mean I see it very clearly ma'am I suppose you'll say this is a sad way to live like a prisoner and of course it is but I'm afraid it's the only way left for me you'll forgive me ma'am but I'd be greatly surprised if these memories of his royal highness didn't remind you also that you are still Britain's sovereign don't see how i can face it mr disraeli i really don't the very thought of going out again fills me with terror but if you really consider it of such great importance i'll try to find the courage to do it thank you my most gracious queen now if you'll excuse me
know your mother was here? No, when did she get here? Just a few moments ago to see the Queen. Have you said anything to her about us? No. Why? I know I should have told you before. I've been hoping for a chance to talk to you. The truth is, I... I wrote a letter to her father. Really? Someone's coming. I'll see you later. She wants to see you now. This minute? Aye, this very minute. Is my mother with Her Majesty? Aye, she is, Mum. We haven't much time before dinner, Emily, so please answer simply. Who is this Lieutenant McHatton? Why, uh, you do know him, don't you? Yes, Your Majesty. He's in the guards here. Have you been having rendezvous with him? Oh, no, indeed, ma'am, believe me. We've met, of course, but only under circumstances of the greatest propriety. And we've never discussed any but the most impersonal of subjects. Could you give us an example? Poetry. Well, how interesting. Whose? 